Can we talk about the LMU game we won? <laughs> yeah, coming off the LMU, how disappointed was, was Saturday's game and, and to kind of take a step back in terms of one, wins and losses? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a very disappointing loss at all, really, because we actually improved offensively. And um, still, you know, I was just talking about um, grading our team out. We're really – I feel like as far as uh, rebounding, we're at an A level. We've come in and competed on the boards every night. We're at a B level defensively. Um, reviewing the tape last night, we looked at so many shots they made were highly contested and just great shots. And it was a one-point game with two minutes to go on the road after a good victory against LMU. Things that we were trying to prove upon was really our assist turnover ratio. We finally got our assist. We finally had more assist than turnovers. That was key, you know, really show some progress and get some production out of uh, Chris O'Brien on back-to-back -back nights, some contributions from Drake UU. And so, uh, and in a game in which um, Sean Lewis uh, had very little production in the first half and to really have him exposed. So big part for us was improvement. And I think we definitely saw that, you know, we want to win as many games as possible, but we don't want to take too many big slides backwards. Come back, we won against LMU by playing great defense, timely offense, and lost Sac State by them hitting big shots and uh, really a great college basketball game. No team more than a five-point lead. So it, wasn't, it was, it was uh, disappointing not to win, but it wasn't disappointing on the overall team progress. Yeah, I, I know that the offense bumped up a little bit in last game, but it's just, you know, it's through five games, the offense is down about 10 points from last year. What, what does the team need to do to turn that around and improve on and just scoring points? Oh, it's, it's field goal shooting percentage. Um, obviously, it's not, you know, we're not going to have those, um, you know, 10, 15 point runs that Lorenzo Keeler was able to produce. And with Kyle Otister and Keeler out, you had two of the most pure shooters that we've had in the. You know, since I've been around here, um, Kyle could really go on a run, hit back-to-back -back triples for us. So it's just developing that. One of the key words that we keep using is developing players. They're not going to appear to be a different player in one day or one week. It's going to take weeks and months to continue to develop. Uh, what I liked about it was look at Malik Love and the, and the run he put together against Loyola Marymount where he goes eight, nine straight points for us and gives us a big spurt. That's the development we want to see. Chris O'Brien going three of four, three of five, three pointers in the first half against um, Sac State. So it's, it's getting those guys, you know, having them put in that position where they get that playing time, that confidence built up where they can give those contributions and put maybe two of those spurts together. And maybe Malik would have a 12 or 14 point game. Chris would have a 15 or 18 point game so that they can develop that confidence um, right off the bat. I think we saw a lot of that from Kyle Otister last year. Kyle was kind of felt his way out throughout the year. And then by the time conference came, I think he ended up at 22 or 24 and, uh, against Irvine down at Irvine. And so that's what happens with these younger guys. You got to keep on developing them. So it's just offense isn't, isn't a real change of offense. It's a, it's a confidence building and developing process as you go along. When you say field goal pursuit, uh, shooting percentage, are, are the players, are they getting the shots you want? Are they taking bad shots? I mean, I know every coach wants some easy shots. I mean, how does the yeah. team create easier shots? Well, we, you know, three things. One, we want our defense to create a few more easy opportunities, and it's having a, a, a few more transition baskets, and we really got a couple of nice ones um, against Sac State, and obviously getting a chance to see the game. But Tom can show you that we had some spurts, you know, uh, really we're, we're great. Fast break, running the wing, running up the middle, getting layups here and there, getting those easy baskets. And then were we getting the shots we wanted to? Actually, in, in, against Sac State, we did. We had a number of open shots. The first half knocked them down, and we were two for 13. They just collapsed in the middle. And um, we had uh, four, five, six, uh, we call naked shots that rolled in and out, popped out. And they made actually two or three really highly contested shots, and the game really rolled that way for them. So we, we'll, we're improving on getting more quality open shots. And the word is more. We didn't turn the ball over, so we had a few more good shots. And that's why it really came down to a uh, last-minute ball game. Whereas Montana State, we weren't able to sustain good shot selection. And, you know, the last 12, 15 minutes, they ran out on us to win by double figures. This game, we were able to sustain it, sustain it, and also balance it with free throw line and getting to the free throw line. So having a transition game having an inside game or slash driving where you get to the free throw line, and then finally getting those open looks and having a chance to knock those down. So it's, it's a real balance between all three things.
to continue to improve. After a slow start for both players, I think you would agree with that. Like Drake and, and Chris have been pretty pretty solid the last couple of games. How important uh, are those two guys to this team, and, and how much more does this team need those guys to, to rise up to, to be competitive? Well, I just think they just got to continue. I think we're very competitive right now because our defensive rebounding has been top notch. Defense rebounding keeps you in every game. You know, every single game has been highly competitive into the last five to eight minutes, if not the last minute. And um, and they've brought that as as seasoned sophomores. Their defense has been very good. Um, now it's, I think, more than Drake and um, Chris, because they've showed the ability now, is, is getting contribution from Malik and Jamal at the point guard where they're able to finish in transition, knock down an open shot, get to the free throw line. If we can, with, between the two point guards, if we can get double figures with them combined, I don't think we're going to see, you know, they're splitting minutes and cents. One gets 25, the other 15 averaging, that type of stuff. So we can combine those two guys into a double figure score. You know, Jamal picks up four or five, and Malik picks up six or eight. Then it, that's at that position you get double figure points. If you look at that, and then uh, other thing we we're pleased with is, is seeing that Jordan Lewis was able to give some contribution. He knocked down a three pointer, have a transition, maybe it's a free throw line. So we can get six or eight from a Jordan Lewis. That'll be helpful too. The other thing we we're pleased with against uh, Loyola Marymount was uh, Ryan Pembleton. We got the 6'10 kid on the court for five, six minutes. He, he got a rebound, he, he took up some space, and given that 6'10 body, uh, a little contribute, you know, get, get him on the floor and get him to contribute a little bit and maybe see if he can get a basket here or there too. You mentioned the two freshmen, um, you know, minus that little spurt there by Malik where he looked like an All-American. <laughs> it, it looks like him and Jamal are definitely going through the growing pains yeah. as you would expect with the freshmen. Um, you know, as a coach, I mean, you know, you just kind of, I mean, those guys have to go because of the injuries, we know. Right, um, right. You know, how tough is it to, like, work those guys uh, and have them play such valuable minutes as, as you know, unseasoned freshmen? Well, I think that the the important part is is as long as they're not getting frustrated, and and the coaching staff's not getting frustrated, they'll continue to improve. You know, and that the hard part is is not, you know, whether they're going to improve. It's how fast can they improve. You know, they're going to improve because they're on the court, they're coachable, but it's how fast. And then you look at our schedule: seven of our next nine games on the road, uh, seven of the next eight on the road after tonight or after Wednesday night's game. So that's where we want to see that progress is they got to build confidence at home and then show that ability to have that success on the road as we as we go on the gauntlet trip of the of the month. Yeah, just a couple more questions just talking about the uh, the, the schedule coming up. This is the last home game before our conference, right? Is mm -hmm. that um, so it's it's a big game. Uh, talk about Hawaii. You, you, it was a great game last year for you guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, how important is this game before you go out on that big track? Well, I think it's important that we play well. I, I mean, we want to win every game. Uh, we want to we want to play and show some another area of improvement. We got to show an area of improvement uh, with our field goal shooting percentage. You know, we've got to have consistent scoring. Um, you know, getting it getting near the 70s. I think that's the part that we really got to be able to develop is that consistency and that confidence that goes along with scoring at home to take that on the road Saturday. Then it's back to LMU on their home court, which quite frankly, then people seem to shoot a little better when they're at their home court. So um, I think it's an important game. I don't think it's, uh, you know, it's obviously not a conference when to go to, you know, when to go to conference playoff game, but we need to continue our goals, continue to build that confidence on our home court. LMU victory is a great victory. Now we want to build that and kind of sustain, see if we can get two in a row at home and beat an undefeated WAC team with, you know, quite frankly, six or seven new guys. They had three guys sitting out, you know, an Arizona transfer. They had three kids that sat out last year, a couple of JUCO kids that came in, and, and uh, some freshmen they were getting to school too. So they've got, they've got a reloaded gun, quite, quite frankly, with five, you know, seven, eight new bodies in there and um, you know, five games at home. You know, they played five home games. They haven't been off the island yet, so hopefully you know, we introduce them to the mainland again here. And they have uh, some resources there to hold some nice tournaments. seems like people want to play in Hawaii a lot, so they have a lot of home games, so it works out well. My last question, we know what, what happened last year through your first five games. I think they're all on the road, right? Yeah, so it was, it was exactly. a tough stretch. This year, two and three, um, I know you won a couple more wins there, but I mean, kind of grade the team through the first five games this year. And how, yeah, how like I said, that? I think, that, I think our, our rebounding has been A, F, or a for effort on, on our, our rebounding, controlling the boards, and B, uh, you know, competing every night on the boards, a B for our overall defensive game plan and, and uh, physicality of the right times. And then CC minus offensively, you know, we knew we would struggle. Um, guard play dominates basketball at every level, high school, college, pro. And with inexperienced guard play, you're not creating many easy shots and inexperienced uh, atmosphere for 
the new guys. So I, I think that we kind of expected to try to, you know, we're, we're average or, or, or below average when it comes to the offensive end after the first five games. So it's quite frankly, if we can sustain our defensive and, and rebounding, especially Hawaii is just monstrous in size, a real good a physical, athletic, tall, um, whack level team, then if we can rebound with them, then we have a, a good chance to then catch rhythm offensively. So I think we got an, an A, B, and C in there um, with room to improve on the C. And that's timely because it's finals next week. So that's, that's real important. What are you guys doing this week to kind of put a charge into the offense and kind of get it going again? Maybe different from last week. Or N N really, we talked about had a, a meeting this morning, and then after watching videotape and, and really looking at things, it's uh, repetition is is the mother of uh, you know success. You know, in, in basketball, football, uh, it, you know, it's, it's doing the right things over and over and over, so that when we hit our post, we have our action off the post. When we fill to the next spot, it's it's second nature, and you don't want to think too much on offense. It's got to you have to have the same repetitions enough. So then when it happens in the game, oh, I've been there, done that. This is the shot from the spot at the speed I'm getting. We just had our pregame practice meeting today. was shooting at the same spot at the same speed that you would in a game. And so even if it's a drill, um, if it's a full court act, action drill or whether it's a half court practice drill, is just getting those reps. And as we saw, really turn the corner on a couple of guys. Drake at the LMU game, big shots. And then Chris O'Brien nailing uh, – Tom might be able to help me out with that. Are we have three of five, Chris O'Brien, maybe three of five from the three-point line in the first half. Um, three, three of four, possibly. Three-pointers. And those were the shots that we thought he would get when they started to help off. And Donahue and Dave um, are both, uh, Hans and Donahue are both very good passers out of the post as they're starting to get doubled and, and, and uh, jammed, them finding that open guy and knocking down that shot. So I think it's a time, you know, it's really a repetitious time. It seems like teams would be keying on David and Sean, you know, and it, it makes it even more important to have guys like O'Brien and Drake come up mm -hmm. clutch like they did against LMU. I mean, yeah. is that kind of what you're preaching as far as, you know, these teams are going to key on the two big guys Yeah, we need? Well, and the other thing that we did was invert the game. If you're going to key on somebody and you're going you're to hang tight on them, basically, not help off them very much, one thing you can do is invert the game, which is where Malik Love played the post. People looking at that, going, "What was that all about?" You know, he went. That wasn't accidental. That was if you're if you're staying close to primary guys, then if you go single coverage in the post and you take a freshman, he's able to go on the block and all of a sudden get back-to-back -back baskets. Kind of change the dynamics of that uh, ability. So you know, the creativity side really comes into play. Is, is not that's nothing different from our regular game plan. We want to post up Chris O'Brien, post up uh, Malik Love, post up uh, uh, Drake Uu. All big, strong, physical guards. And so we can invert it. If you're not, if you're not going to help down off of Dave Hansen, then we're going to have single coverage on the block. Cool. Hey, Joe, would you have still given your team a B defensively after the LMU game? A B rating? Yeah, I mean, mean it might have been higher? Yeah. Uh, maybe it would have been a B plus. <laughs> You know, we played pretty darn well defensively. But one thing you have to watch when you watch film, you, you say, did we guard well or did they miss shots? In some games, you may not guard that play that well, and the guy was wide open. He just misses a shot, and you go, oh, great, we, we played great defense. Well, maybe they didn't hit a shot that night. Whereas I thought we didn't, we didn't, have, any, we didn't have too many major breakdowns. We had a couple breakdowns against Sac State. But they made some great shots over contested hands um, in rhythm that we've got to be able to, okay, we've got to take up a little space. We've got to help a little bit longer. So that's where I'd say we went from a, from a B-plus down to a B, is recognizing a hot hand and changing it a little bit more um, during the course of the game. So good question. Great, great change all the time.